Well, what is up guys? My name is Sebastian and in today's video I'm going to show you how I make my covers. And uh, instead of showing you some boring clips of me recording, I decided to open up a session I did a few weeks ago so we can go through all the tracks one by one. So uh, let's hop in. Alright, so welcome to the session. This is a Be Kind cover I did a few weeks ago. With every cover I always start with the drums, that way everything else is more fun and easier to record. So I use a drum software called Superior Drummer 3 by TuneTrack. And I've actually been using TuneTrack ever since Easy Drummer 1 and then I got Easy Drummer 2. And a few months ago I upgraded to Superior Drummer 3. And uh, I'm not going to go too deep into the software. But it's basically filled with a lot of drum kit presets in different styles. And then you can tweak the individual drums as well. I usually start off with my own preset just to save some time and speed up my workflow. And what I really like about this program is the groove section. It's got ton of grooves as you can see and uh, they've been played by an actual human so it doesn't sound like a drum machine. First I listen to the original and trying to get a sense of the vibe and the structure of the song. And after that I start going through the grooves and trying to find something that I like and fits the song. And after that I just drag them into the session like that and they usually need some tweaking. So here I can just tweak the drums the way I want. Here are the kick drums, snares, hi-hats and all that stuff. So here is basically the drum track of the Be Kind cover. This is the verse. And the chorus. And that's basically it for the drums. That's how I go about it. Uh, next up we have another drum track, which is in the intro. It's basically the same drum track, I just put it through a filter. Sounds like this. And then the real drums comes in. So that's basically the drums. All right, so next up we have the bass, which has been recorded straight into my audio interface. And it sounds like this by itself. And first we have the Sansamp plugin, which is like a preamp to shape the sound a little bit. It sounds like this. Quite a big difference. Then we have R bass that adds some low end harmonics. It's quite subtle. Then we have an EQ where I high pass up to 65 and then I cut some 200. 650 sounds like this. Kind of gets rid of that muddiness. And then I finish it off with a compressor to make it more even. So that's the bass sound. And for the chorus, I've actually duplicated the bass track. So this other one is a distorted track. Let's have a listen. So it's basically the same plugin. I just cranked up the drive and crunch to make it distort. Then EQ, quite radical moves here. 700 minus 11, 400 minus 13, and uh, 200 minus 6. Let's have a listen. And without it. So I basically cut all the mids and then together they sound like this. Mm -hmm. 
and both of those go into a bass bus where it's just a multi-band compressor just controlling the low end a little bit more another EQ which is doing actually nothing <laughs> and then a limiter just to make it even more even and consistent so with the drums and bass here's how it sound And then we have some synths. First we have a pad, sounds like this, which goes through the whole song. And here I just high passed it to 130, just to get through to some unnecessary low end. And in the chorus we have a organ sound Sounds like this. Same thing, high passed, quite much. Up to 550, just to get rid of that low end again. And then we have a piano sound. Here's the EQ. Again, some high pass. Got rid of some some of that boxiness and a little high shelf to make it cut through a little bit better. So far, we have this. Sounds pretty nice. All right, so next up we have the guitars. We can start with the rhythm tracks. They've been double tracked, which means uh, I play the same thing twice. And they sound like this. And they also been recorded straight into the audio interface. So without any plugins, they're going to sound really good. Rock and roll. Uh, for my guitar sounds, I use the plugin called Archetype Nolly by Neural DSP. It's got four different amps and four different cabinets which you can combine the way you want. So for this song, I use this 5150 model, which is a high gain amp by itself. It sounds like this. So already it sounds pretty good, but after that I add an EQ where I just high passed it a little bit to 100 and low passed it to 10k thing with these uh, amp simulators or modelers is that they add a lot of high end so i usually like to low pass it to about 10k just to get rid of that fizz which is super annoying so without eq and wait it So it's really subtle. It just gets rid of those unnecessary things. And next up we have a actually a multiband compressor, which is basically only working in the bridge section where I have this palm mute. So it kind of controls those. Let's have a listen. As you can see, it's really taming the low mids when I palm mute. Without it. So 
for example, in the chorus, it's basically doing nothing. As you can see here. But when the paw mutes hits, it's really taming them down. So that's the purpose of that plugin. And lastly, I just get rid of some annoying ringing frequencies. So that's the rhythm tracks. And then in the chorus, we have a couple of other guitars. So usually in the chorus, I like to layer the guitars to make it sound bigger. So here we have a, this track. Again, it's the same plugin, just a different amp. This is kind of Marshall type amp, a little less gain. And then it goes through a delay. With the delay. Add some nice space to it. And here I just done the same thing. Just got a rid of some 100 hertz and low pass it to uh, 10k. And that's it. And that's pan to the left. And then to the other side, I have a guitar that sounds like this. And it's got the same amp, same EQ. And here I also got rid of those annoying frequencies in the high end. So together they sound like this. With the rhythm tracks. And with the drums and the synths. So far it sounds like this. And here in the second verse, we have this U2 type guitar thing over here called the Edge. It sounds like this. Again, the same amp. And here's the stereo delay that really makes that effect. So the trick here is to have a quarter delay on one side and then the dotted eight on the other side. And here just some basic EQ, high passing it pretty high. Because I'm playing quite high, so the low end is just unnecessary. So with everything else, it sounds like this. And then the second chorus is the same. So here in the bridge, we have a real cool guitar part that comes in. It's called post rock. It's this uh, tremolo picking thing. Sounds like this. So the trick to achieve that sound is to put a distor uh, delay, sorry, a delay before the distortion. So the delay is being distorted. That's how you get that sound. Let's hear without. Back in. And also some delay and reverb after the amp. And then I think I have an additional delay here just to make it super crazy. Yeah. And with it. 
Thanks, it's super spacey. I like it. So, so far, we have this. And then lastly, we have the lead guitar. Again, same plugin. We have a preset called Sebastian Lead, which is usually my starting point. And it sounds like this. If we go to the chorus. And it sounds like there's a ton of delay, but uh, in the mix, it sounds pretty good. And here is just the same EQ, high passing 150, low pass 10K. Then I have a limiter just to make it sit in the mix. Not really doing much, just taming the peaks. And then here's the delay. It's a stereo delay, a dotted eighth note. Without it. And that's basically the lead tone. And then in the chorus, I double that part an octave higher. So then you have this. with the main lead. That's a typical trick also with vocals, so I, it works pretty great with guitars too. That's basically it. So this is how the chorus sounds with everything in. Oh, almost forgot. Here we have the percussion or the sounds effects that I think really adds, adds something to the mix. For example, the pre-chorus going into the chorus. We have a rise. And then when the chorus hits, we have a bomb sound and a tambourine. So with everything else. You don't really notice them in the mix, but they just add something. And that's basically it. Uh, all these tracks are going through these four plugins right here at the end. First, we have a, a console emulation, it's emulating the old SSL console. It's also really subtle. Let's take the chorus. Without it. I mean, you can really hear it, but it has something. And then a compressor. And right now it's really not working properly because I had to pull down the volume for the video. But usually I go for about 2 dB of gain reduction. And then finally we have a EQ where I just cut out the super lows, 30 hertz. And then some annoying 4000 hertz. Let's hear what that sounds. Super nasty. And then finally, the limiter and some finalizing EQ by the Ozone plugin. 
And that's it guys. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something. Obviously every song is different. Every song is going to require some different sounds and techniques. But this is basically what I do 90% of the time. So uh, I hope you learned something and uh, I'll see you soon. Hey up. <laughs>